So welcome to another ZBrush Quickies and uh, this time we're going to model a baseball and a couple of years back uh, I remember modeling a baseball in 3D Max and um, you know I set up a reference plane uh, sourced a unstitched flattened out 2D pattern of uh, the two parts of the baseball fabric that kind of wrap around each other and they built out the topology and so that it could it was deformable and then uh, added band modifiers and fiddled around for a while until uh, until it was okay but um, yeah, it's way easier and more importantly way more fun in ZBrush so um, let's get started and before we start um, I just want to mention something about the, the sphere tr uh, primitive so the sphere primitive um, sphere 3D um, in ZBrush has a weird kind of a um, pole kind of issue. It's just the way it's built. Um, so to demonstrate, I'm just going to uh, quickly add. Um, I just turn that to a poly mesh 3D first, and just quickly add panel loops to it. And you can see if I smooth it out, there's a weird hole in the end of it. And it's it's just it's always been like that in ZBrush. It's just the way it's um, the way it's it's been built. Um, you can always export and import. Um, and it'll fix it or just bring a sphere in from your 3D package or even just use a, a poly uh, like a geosphere which is a quadded sphere <coughs> but, but it doesn't matter for this so I just wanted to uh, make people aware of that in case they, they weren't so I'll just undo that and the way to fix it <coughs> excuse me is to come down to geometry um, modify topology and weld points and you can see there welded them but it just added loads of creasing so I'm just going to go to uncrease all and then the last step is go to mesh integrity uh, check mesh integrity and then fish, fix mesh integrity and then if I add that panel loops again um, you can see that it's alright if I smooth it it's grand so that is it I um, just wanted to mention that and ready to start so I'll just go to the front view and it's quite easy to do this so I'm going to shut up and uh, and get down it so just select your slice curve brush and hold down control and shift change the stroke to circle square and center and just drag out a circle kind of roughly the size of uh, the patch as it's going to wrap around so the patch here and as it wraps around the back side so it's you know maybe a bit bigger than that so it's you know a little bit of trial and error here but I'll um, now I'll, uh, mirror that <coughs> mirror and weld in Y and then bring the view around to this side and with that slice curve control and shift held down again just turn off uh, square and center and just drag out again and then you just want to intersect, get the circle to intersect these polygroups uh, about there. And then we can mirror and weld in X. What we want to mirror for is the next, so that uh, ZBrush mirror and welds across the axis from the correct direction. So it'll always go from uh, left to right as you're looking, uh, you know, screen left in the front view. In other words, if I turn on the floor. Um, this is the front view. Um, right now, we want to isolate these polygroups so you can see uh, this is giving us uh, the patches that we want that that wrap around each other. So the first thing to do is um, you want to isolate, uh, break up these um, patches here because um, you don't want them to overlap when you're trying to select polygroups. So if we select that one that one you can see now that one needs to be there but it's not so just uh, isolate them control shift auto groups bring them back and then we can just take these ones and sorry it was the orange ones that I wanted to uh, I wanted to auto groups so just all groups the orange ones and just to break
break them away. And now we have the proper groups. You can just control W to make that its own polygroup. Control Shift and Control W and Control Shift click. And we'll probably just make that a different one actually because just to keep the colours a bit different. So that's uh, our basic kind of pattern as as it were laid out. And the next thing to do now is just to uh, Z remesh that. So I'm just going to do half, adapt off, keep groups on, smooth groups down to zero, and Z remesh. And again, um, we're getting uh, proper topology now um, with edge loops, which is important. So I'm going to just do that once more, same. And just till I get what I want, which I have now, apart from that spirally bit there. So you can just uh, just keep doing that and same until you get what you want and eventually you will which I did so there's a nice new topology with our pattern laid out and now we want to um, just duplicate that and I'm going to solo out the duplicate and this is going to be our kind of proxy mesh for the stitching that I'm going to add at the end so what I want to do is just scale this up a tiny bit so that the stitching will be sitting slightly off uh, the original one so with scale selected if you just click the white circle that will center it up and then once it's centered up if you hold shift you can uniformly scale so I'm going to turn off solo and turn on transparent and snap to a view and just hit that white circle again and shift and if I select, uh, if I turn, sorry, if I turn on ghost as well, just so I can see, yeah, just slightly bigger is enough, and that's uh, that is slightly bigger there. So I'll solo that out again, and the Z modeler brush selected. And what I want to do now is just uh, bevel this edge loop here. So this is setting up for a stitching. So I've bevel edge loop complete single row, and just bevel that out. And then we can just delete hidden on those poly groups and then hover over an edge, insert um, single edge loop, and just slap one right in the middle here. And then poly group, poly loop, and the orange line dashes facing where you want to, um, the direction of the loop to go. And that's it set up then for the stitching. So if I unsolo and turn off ghost and transparent, you can see now that's sitting just slightly let's turn on double slightly above the other one which is exactly what we want um, and now i'm just going to grab this uh, stitches brush so this stitches brush and um, i downloaded it from bad king but I, if i press m it's a multi insert these are the ones that come with it and um, so i just modified um, this double stitching and created a kind of a baseball stitch and then just appended it into this brush easy to do so I just download this from bad king um, you know, draw draw the stitching out onto a flat plane, and uh, delete everything but two of them, and then just uh, auto groups them and mask transpose each one, rotate it, and um, snap your canvas to the X Y plane, uh, create insert brush, and then just append it or save it out as a new brush. And um, if you append it, it'll already have the settings of this brush here with the curve and um, distance, uh, roll distance or the step curve and everything set up, so it'll it'll draw out perfectly and with that all said now if I just with that stitches brush selected I'm just going to start dragging and then hold shift and it'll automatically frame out that poly group and that's why I set it up like that and it's massively big it's reliant on the size of your brush so I'll drop the brush size down and just click on the curve again still too big drop it down a bit and that looks about right and it's also going to be bang on the center and um, where we want it to be so I can just um, clear that mask and then if I select these two poly groups and then just uh, delete them and then you can just cl uh, click anywhere to get rid of that curve um, so just draw across the, the mesh there there's delete curve up here under the stroke menu as well but you can just uh, drag across the mesh and that'll delete the curve 
So back to our baseball, and we just solo that out again. And now if we're just gonna, yeah, I have panel loops and everything, obviously on my custom menu here, but um, I'm not gonna go through the basics and this, these quickies are just kind of uh, general sort of tips. So the other videos go in depth much more. So panel loops, uh, I'll set the loops to three. Set brushes, crazy sliders, and I'll uh, just play around with the thickness here and see what we get. So that is not enough, so I'll just make it a bit thicker, bring it up a bit, and that looks like it might do it. And then we can just press D to turn on dynamic subdivision and raise it up a couple of levels. And on solo, and you can see now our stitches are slightly in the wrong spot there because and when I panel loops it out, um, it came out quite far. Um, you can see here, um, slightly off center. So if I try that panel loops again, and maybe not so, not so thick, and I'll try it again. play around with that thickness again yeah probably bring it up a bit more and we can see it's not quite perfectly lined up in some places you can see it's lined up here so you know instead of um, it's quite easy to just grab a uh, have a large move brush then and the beauty of Z brush and just select alt click on the stitches and then just you know you can just move them into position instead of fiddling around and trying to get settings and everything correct you know it's just as easy here to um, fly around fly around the mesh and a big move brush as you can see and a few more here and that looks pretty good you know and if that's sitting slightly above there still um, you can use your move brush then with alt tail down um, to go in or out along the normals but what I might do instead is just um, you know, you could just give that slightly more uh, panel loops, or else you could just uh, click the white circle with scale and select one of these axes, and then just shift held and just scale it up slightly. And then when you um, sorry, I'll just apply dynamic subdivision. You can always then go back to your stitches and uh, get that big move brush again and just kind of check from a couple of different angles and just move them in slightly you know this is the as I say this is the th sort of stuff from ZBrush that's why well, it's it's you know because you're not fiddling around with with things for you know this sort of stuff it's really easy to do you're not being too precious about it but also uh, getting the results um, and then one last thing you can do with your baseball now remember like this is only uh, taking me less than 10 minutes kind of in real time um, another thing you can do then with the baseball because we've created uh, that nice topology what we can do is we can you know put some seams in here along where the stitches are and we have this topology um, along the edge here to help us. So, you know, because of the way the topology is created, it's it's they're not parallel. The edge loops aren't parallel. So, uh, you know, what you could do is let's say a modeler, and um, you just use slide and just kind of slide, slide that edge loop down a bit, and then we could use insert single edge loop. And then just start inserting. But if you hold shift, it's going to parallelize 
off that edge there that you're closest to and then we can just move it out to the stitching so that it should match up pretty much around and we can do the same thing here so come close to that edge that you favor and then just press shift and that parallelize it there you'll see it and then you can just grab those uh, new edge loops and bevel and just click here to repeat last and then uh, there's a tool here I like I could uh, Q mesh that, that in but I like using them um, this insert multiple edge loops interactive elevation and this is similar to Max's edge extrusion tool but obviously it's interactive and it's in Z brush so you just click on an edge ring and start dragging left right up and down and you can interactively control the extrude depth um, or height and the amount of uh, edge loops so I'm just gonna um, leave it at that like that would have got the same result by um, Q meshing and then scaling in the poly loop but I uh, just wanted to show that too and uh, I'll do the same here um, if I can just get an edge and just click on that one and um, to repeat uh, it didn't work so I'll just uh, repeat it there manually pull it in and sorry I think it's actually a Q mesh in there so I'll just pull it in and out a loop and that ought to do it and I'll just uh, turn on dynamic subdivision again and we get our seam now is nice and parallel and remember like you can still you can still move the stitching around if we need to that's uh, fairly good as it is um, it's still sticking above it here um, that I'm not uh, terribly happy with but as I said this is just a <coughs> excuse me a quickie so I'm not gonna go crazy um, I'm trying to get a perfect run but uh, it looks fairly decent for the whatever 10 odd minutes or something that it took you can see these poles here and uh, a higher resolutions this is a dynamically subdivided mesh so it won't really work but at higher resolutions um, you can use ZBrush's alternative smoothing method which is uh, start smoothing let go of shift and you can actually smooth out poles magically um, but in this case um, I'm going to leave them there I'm not going to start dividing up and trying to get rid of them um, and also um, those panel loops gave us a nice kind of a you see this is kind of humped here actually looks realistic um, for all us non-americans we have to um, look at baseballs on google but um, our american friends can just look around their bedroom and i'm sure there's one lying somewhere um, i actually used to have a one that my dad brought me back from san diego <laughs> back in the 80s when i was a wee, a wee lad um, i think i still have it there somewhere just not beside me so I had to use Google but anyway uh, I digress so yeah that is the baseball um, and I hope the methods and techniques have been useful and another example of um, you know just using ZBrush in a kind of a weird so not a weird way but just to use all the tools together um, and it's amazing some of the things I see people coming up with I'm uh, constantly flabbergasted at, at some of the amazing things they come up with. So um, it's nice to, to try and think up new ways to use the tools. So I'll leave it at that for this one and uh, see you in the next one. All right, then. cheers, thanks, good luck.